Hello everybody and today we are at the Huron Indian Cemetery in Kansas City, Kansas with a lot of cicadias. And we are, like I said, in downtown Kansas City, Kansas. And for those of you who don't know, there is a Kansas City, Kansas and a Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City, Missouri was established in 1850. Kansas City, Kansas, which is where we are right now, was established in 1872. Unknown years. Here's another one right here. Let's just go check it out. Frank Brown, 1900 to 1935. And that's just that headstone. I'm gonna go around here so we can see it in the sunlight. So the headstone was broken and that is what's left. Interesting. There's another plaque. Many unmarked graves in this area. William E. Connolly, survey of 1895 to 1896. Yeah, so this cemetery is supposed to have between 400 and 600 burials. Let's see. Ron Ton D, or Warpole, 1775 to 1843. Oh, there's a story there. Ron Ton D. Mary Day, 1852 to 1855. Wow, so she's three years old. I guess life on the prairie was rough. AD. I don't know what that means. I'm sure maybe somebody knows. Let me know in the comments what that AD could possibly mean. Where we got here? We got Harriet Johnson, another child, 1848-1850. And then another child, Richard Johnson, 1846-1857. to A lot of these say unknown. There's another broken or crude. I can't tell if these are just crude tombstones or if these have been vandalized. It's kind of interesting. It's got that little notch there in it. I w wonder what that's for. Interesting. Another unknown. What does it one say? John Arms, 1811 to 1855, 56. Sorry. You can see it. The sun is going down, as you can tell. All right, so we are to the, I'm supposing the newer part of the cemetery. And so we're gonna check that part out. Yeah, it's super loud here because we are in the heart of Kansas City, Kansas. I don't know if you can see all the buildings around us as I pan around. And we are in prime real estate here and that is a problem. And that is why this cemetery it's been so controversial. So in July of 1843, there were 664 members of the Wyandotte Nation relocated to Kansas. Now they originally were from Canada and they had moved down to Ohio and now they were being forced to Kansas. And interestingly enough, a lot of them came by steamboat. So they got on at Cincinnati and they went down the Ohio and then up the Mississippi to St. Louis and then on up the Missouri River to Westport Landing. And I actually have a video on Westport Landing and I will put a link in the description as well as a card at the end of this video. So once they got here and they started to camp, they were camping down by the river and typhoid and yellow fever kind of ravaged their camp. And they say anywhere between 41 to 100 Native Americans died and they chose this as their cemetery. Let's go check out some more of these 
grays like we're going to go straight into the sun so we're going to have to be really careful about seeing this i can't see this it says mchenry son of something northrop died december 14th 1857 aged three years 25 days that's what that says oh somebody has put a little feather down Oh, and look, here is a broken tombstone. And this one is for Thomas Northrup, 1852 to 1876. Yeah, another thing I read about the cemetery is that it gets vandalized a lot. As I'm walking around, I'm not seeing uh, it very well protected. As a matter of fact, we kind of came in the back way. We came in the wrong way and we were able to get into the cemetery without any problem whatsoever. So like that little monument, I'm sure it had something that was sitting on the top of it. Sorry, I'm being very shaky. This ground is, is not solid. Okay, what is this? Zelinda Armstrong, born December 3rd, 1820, died February 10th, 18. 1863, 1883. Okay, very hard. And say I'm sure at some point it has something on it. And then this one's broken. Yeah. So it's kind of sad. So like I said, this is prime real estate. And many times people have been wanting to sell this. So the Wyandots got here in 1843 and by 1855 they were once again asked to leave and they wanted them to go to Oklahoma and part of the Wyandotte tribe wanted to go the other part wanted to stay so they made a deal and the ones that wanted to stay could now become U.S. citizens but have no rights as Native Americans and so they, this nation this Wyandotte nation split off into two branches the Kansas Wyandots and the Oklahoma Wyandots. And the Oklahoma Wyandots were the ones that continued to practice the culture. And so they decided in 1903, uh, no, 1906, I believe it was, that they were gonna sell this property because it is prime real estate. Once again, we're seeing downtown Kansas City all around us. But there were three sisters who decided that they were not gonna let this happen and their names were Helena, Lydia, and Ida Conley. And their father and their mother were buried in this cemetery. Their father was a white man, his name was Andrew, and their mother, Eliza, she was an eighth Wyandotte Indian. And their three girls decided that they were not going to let this land be destroyed and developed. So what did they do? They built a six by eight foot shack around their parents' graves and barricaded themselves in there for nearly six years. And they patrolled the cemetery with their father's Civil War shotgun. Now I am on a mission to find them. Oh, they're right here, just as I'm speaking. They are right here. So this is where they had their little hut and I'll get a picture of it so you can see it. Um, so there's, we'll start with the father. Okay. Andrew Serenius Conley departed this life November 23rd, 1885. And then over here is the mother Eliza Burton Conley departed this life July 9th, 1879. And this, there were four sisters actually. So this is the fourth sister and she died March 3rd, 1880. Her name was Sarah. And then this is one of the three sisters who guarded this cemetery. And this is Ida. And looks like she died on October 6th, 1948. Now, the one that really tried her hardest to save the cemetery is this guy right here, Eliza Burton Conley. And everybody called her uh, Lydia. And she was an attorney. She actually went to law school, which is kind of rare at the beginning of the 20th century 
for a woman not only to go to law school but to practice law as well. So she filed an injunction in June of 1907 and unfortunately uh, that failed. But then in July of 1907 she appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court and she waited for two years for them to hear her case and unfortunately they did not find in her favor but there was enough publicity that a senator, his name was Charles Curtis, introduced a bill called the Act of 1913, Public Number 37. And basically, it protected the cemetery and gave it to the city of Kansas City, Kansas. It gave them $25,000 and $5,000 a year to maintain it. So, it's very interesting. And the shack that they had right here, it said, trespass at your peril. So while Lydia was trying to do things legally, Helena here was trying to scare people off by putting curses on them. And she says right here on her tombstone, Wyandotte National Burying Ground. Cursed be the villain that molests their graves. So she was very good at scaring people out of the cemetery by cursing them and putting hex on them and stuff. And they were kind of, I think, probably a menace to the police department at that time. They were arrested many times. They got into scuffles with uh, the other citizens. So there are those, there's the, their graves. Those are very, it's a very interesting story. I mean, they, these girls, these three girls decided that they were just, they were going to basically take on the U.S. government. They were not going to let anybody take their precious burial ground. Let's go look at some more graves. I think this one over here, right next to the Conleys. Let's see, this is James Zane. Okay. James C. Zane, 1890. That's what it says, I got a marker down here. James Zane, 1832 to 1870, and William Zane, 1866 to 1870. That was this is just an amazing place in the heart of Kansas City. And if you think it's amazing too, why don't you go ahead and give it a thumbs up and consider liking and subscribing because I post videos like this every Thursday. I like to get out and explore the Missouri and the Kansas area. See what hidden gems I can uncover for everybody. This was a good one, I think. I enjoyed it. I've never been here before, so I think it's a pretty amazing, amazing place. Um, yeah, I'm not going to try to pronounce that name. We'll have to father, and then there's a sister. Here we go. Here's a uh, Newton Harding. So, this looks like he was in the Civil War. Let me see if I can find out some information on his unit and see what Warren or Newton Harding did. like the Zanes and the Hardings intermingled. I love how they're just butt up right next to these trees. I mean, it just is so pretty. Here's some more of the Zanes. Elizabeth, Irvin, Cora, 
That looks very recent. I mean, I suppose that you can still be buried in the cemetery. I think you have to have wine dot blood to do that. As well, you probably should. Oh, look at that, just a baby. A lot of unknowns, a lot of babies. I've noticed in the cemetery just walking around. Let's go check this little lone one out right over here. Unknown child. And all these markers were put in recently. I don't want to say like recently, like 10 years ago, but you know, quite some time. But they, they're modern. Another unknown child. A marker, Barbara Collins. She was one. So it must have been rough here around that time to be a baby and to grow. I feel bad for the parents. I mean, just because it was something that happened frequently doesn't mean it didn't hurt any less. Here's another one. Many unmarked graves in this area. 